This is the Rhino high velocity kiln burner and we're running several tests simultaneously today. What's up fellas? We're back out here at White Sands and today we're going to test an experimental high performance kiln burner with a ceramic or refractory combustion chamber. This right here is the interior. This is a, a low melting point refractory with an operating temperature of just 2400 degrees. The first test will be propane and we will then move to waste oil. Okay, this next little bit of footage exhibits precisely why we need to have some type of water mitigation. I have two water traps on this system and look at the amount of water still flying through. So a desiccant charge is absolutely essential if you're doing anything that requires extremely high temperatures, anything above like 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit. Now I cast this combustion chamber quite some time ago and I had too much going on to pay attention to it and I let it crack. It dried too quickly. I didn't leave it wet while it was curing. This thing is extremely loud. Um, we're just about approaching jet engine at takeoff, so I'm still kind of lacking there. No shock diamonds, and it's not as loud as a jet, so wrap it up, take it home. Here's kind of a sound scale. You can show that it, it has aircraft takeoff in the 120 to 140 decibel range on this chart. I don't know if I buy that or not. Jet engines tend to shake your whole body. This thing does a little bit but not like no jet engine. So essentially I'm gonna cast another one of these and do what's called a wet cure, where it cures underwater and it'll be 50% stronger. And um, I think I'm gonna start making some of these things with a little bit uh, thinner of a refractory shell. This was cracked before we started and it opens up quite a bit and I'm thinking about adding another metal bracket on the outside there, but this thing's going to be stuffed in the side of a wall of a furnace, so those cracks aren't going to mean anything. It's performing pretty well. We're out of propane, so I can't turn it up all the way. You see I have it down to 6 cubic foot per minute. Had to turn it down because we're running out of propane. Still a lot of water flying through there, though. Just kind of showing what's happening. If you're ever trying to melt some cast iron or something, you definitely need to have a desiccant charge in place. I have two water separators and we still got a lot of water flying through. Okay, here I did not touch the fuel setting. I just turned the air down to exhibit how much fuel we're actually burning in that tiny little six to seven inch flame. Probably about a 90,000 watt flame. Compressors get too hot. This was cracked before we started because I didn't properly cure it. I just kind of gave up on it. Okay, so that crack closed back up. And the refractory paint's doing okay. Now we're going to do some pressure transducer testing here. I've got some theories on why these burners are so loud. And I've always wondered what is the internal pressure inside of one of these things when it's running. Is there vacuum voids? Things like that. And today we're gonna to find out, and it's pretty interesting. Matter of fact, there's both pressure and vacuum inside this combustion chamber simultaneously, which is why it sustains combustion. You have regions of low pressure that is causing a flow of high pressure going to it. And right there we hit 0.75 PSI's inside of that combustion chamber. So yeah, it's gonna be loud. Um, outside of the flame there, we're um, at, at about almost a half PSI. So the fact that we're blowing about a half pound of pressure out of a one inch nozzle is pretty substantial. Right there's a vacuum of 1.8 inches of mercury, which is a pretty good vacuum. You see there's vacuum all through the back end of this burner.
So there you have it, fellas. That last little part is for a theory I've been working on regarding noise levels of combustion systems. And I pretty much figured out why some burners are so much louder than others and why the loud ones are the hottest. So when you're going for super high temps, you gotta have the loud burners. If you're just doing, you know, 2,400 degrees or whatever, you don't need loud burners. Okay, so I tried to pull this apart by grabbing it with both hands and it's as solid as a rock. I'm gonna cast another one of these, but this time I'm not gonna let it crack. As I said, this thing was cracked before we started. And it's good to see that it's not detrimental to the structure. When this burner's in operation, it will be stuck in the side of a wall of a furnace. So a crack like this isn't gonna really do anything at all. Not gonna hurt us. Tomorrow, we're gonna test this thing on waste oil. And the coating did not hold up as well as I wanted to. I'm gonna to have to tweak the composition on that a little bit. I was just giving this yttrium oxide a try. Just kind of testing it in high temperature areas to see how it performs. I did not let the sodium silicate cure, which is probably an issue. I probably need to wait to let the sodium silicate completely convert into sodium silica. So, but inside this hot throat, that stuff is on there, dude. Okay, so we're gonna see this thing running on some waste oil tomorrow, and we're gonna be doing some heat shield blasting. I've got a couple pieces of this uh, refractory with some different paint coatings on it. I'm gonna be giving that a try. Got one down here drying. 